Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the Smash Ultimate Modding Workshop. In this episode, I'll be explaining how to detect when a player has successfully landed a hit. This episode builds on some topics learned in episode 25, so if you haven't already watched it, I'd recommend you do before this one. Just like episode 26, there's some prerequisites that you'll need before actually writing your code. Firstly, you need to use these three imports. You also need to declare these two variables at the beginning of the script. This first one sets the offset of the collision function we'll be replacing. Make sure you do not edit this value. The second is just a flag we'll be using to check if Ryu has successfully landed a certain move. Since we're actually creating a flag, it can be named whatever you want, and can be initialized with essentially any value you want. Just make sure that if you use more than one, they cannot have the same name or value. Again, at the bottom of the script, we have to have this find subsequence function, and also this offset search code one. Without these, your mod will not work. You also need to have this unsafe function at the bottom of the file, exactly like I do. Going back up now, I have this function prepared. It's literally just reuse fair, except a few frames before the hitboxes are defined, I turn the flag I defined on, and when the hitboxes are cleared, the flag is turned back off. Next, this is the function that does all the work and requires all of our prereqs. Two of the parameters passed into this function are attacker ID and defender ID. This function is ran whenever a hit occurs, so what we can do is take these two parameters, get BOMAs from them, find which character hit which other character, and then run some code on them both. So these four lines are getting the BOMAs and finding the fighter type of each. Now we check if the flag we defined is on for the attacker. If it is, for this example, I'll be adding velocity to the attacker, which we know has to be Ryu, since he's the only one who can activate the flag. We then turn the flag off for Ryu. Next, we have to check if the defender is a fighter. And if they are, then we force a sticky bomb into their hand. We need to check if the defender is a fighter, because if we try running this code on, say, a boss, or an assist trophy, or just like another item, some of those can't hold items, so it would cause the game to function really weird, probably crash. Also, the name for Sticky Bomb is Chewing. Fun. Last thing we need to do is tell the game to run the original code, just so we don't mess up every single collision in the game. Now we just have one small thing to do. Let's say that between Ryu turning the flag on and Ryu turning the flag off, he's hit or he lands on the ground and the script ends before we can actually turn the flag off. Next time he hits an opponent, this code will run. All we have to do to fix this is make a fighter frame for Ryu. All it'll do is check if he's doing anything other than a fair, and if he is, turn the flag off. Before I test this in Smash, I should explain that this code can also be used to make search boxes. Generally, how you would make a search box is replace these hitboxes with hitboxes that do 0%, no knockback, and then remove the collision attribute. So essentially just make a ghost hitbox. It does nothing and can't be seen, but if it connects with an opponent, it'll still run this code. Instead of just giving Ryu some backwards velocity, we could do something like, if the opponent is hit by the search box, Ryu gets an item in his hand, and we've essentially made like a pickpocket move. Either way, we have the fighter frame, Ryu's fair, and our collision function listed down here, so we can build the plugin and test it in Smash now. If we now do a fair, nothing much really happens. But if our fair lands, then we get thrown back a little bit, and Ken gets a sticky bomb. As usual, this code will be available in item 1 of the description, and I hope this helped. Happy modding!